Our first guest this week is two gentlemen from the company Novaxis Global Incorporated, XS and X their stock symbol. Uh, Dr. Dwayne Irvin, the CEO of the company. Dwayne, welcome back to the program. It's good to be here, Don. Thank you for the invitation. And your Chief Financial Officer, Neil Laird. Neil, always great to see you as well. Thank you, Don. It's nice to see you again. Now, Dwayne, the, first, the last time I had you on was about two months ago. You were really excited about be, being awarded orphan drug status by the FDA. Can you reiterate that and tell us what it really means for the company? Oh, absolutely. Well, it's a great feather, I like to call it, in the cap. Uh, it's uh, We were obtained orphan drug designation by the FDA at the Q4 of last year. Uh, we asked for two malignant brain tumor indications to be covered by that, and they were uh, very nice to expand the indications to all malignant brain tumors, which was uh, quite nice of them to do that. So we're really excited about that. It significantly increases the market size for when we bring our technology to market. Now, what does that started. mean to the company overall? Overall, it means that uh, we have opportunities to have access to non-dilutive funding as we need to you know, move forward and, and generate capital to raise uh, for our clinical trials. It means we also uh, can obtain uh, tax credits as we uh, move forward in our clinical trials. Furthermore, it uh, it allows the FDA will be sitting side by side with us to help direct us in our trial design, uh, et cetera. And uh, when it, when we go to commercialize, we could potentially have uh, up to uh, you know many years of exclusivity with the technology that we bring to market. So we'd like to think that. Um, it really will enhance our ability to move forward with the trials by having uh, more direct communications with the FDA as we move forward. To of, say course, the mm -hmm. of course, from development to commercialization can take some time. Um, I know you're pre-revenue right now. How's, how's fundraising uh, coming along, uh, Neil? Can you elaborate on that for us? I think it's going very well. I mean, obviously, everyone knows it's a tough market at the moment, but we, we've we been able to raise money, you know, to keep the operations going. And we, we have a number of opportunities that we're pursuing. And, um, you know, I feel pretty confident we're, we're going to be in good shape um, in order to get the um, IND application completed. Now, uh, Dwayne, uh, what, do you, what would you say is the outlook? What's, what's the biggest challenge you're facing in the remainder of 23? Well, we, um, you know, almost all challenges seem to be relatively equal at this stage. You know, one of the goals or milestones that we seek to achieve this year is to complete our, all the data necessary uh, for our IND application. And so we're laser beam focused on getting that done so we can file our IND this year. Uh, that's one of our major milestones to achieve. Uh, but second to that, we're very much interested when the time is right to uplisting to NASDAQ. Uh, and getting more eyes and uh, investors in on our stock. Um, furthermore, we look to, for opportunities to expand our executive board, bring in more talent to help us move the vehicle forward. So, uh, you know, I think these three major milestones uh, will help move the company forward and bring significant value to the company in 2023. Uh, people that look at public companies are always wondering when the, when the product can come to market. Uh, I know that's a... Uh, a moving target. Do you have any estimate whatsoever? It, it's we. I can talk uh, overall, as you know, in this country, uh, typically it will take 11, 12 years on average uh, to go through phase one, two, three clinical trials to bring a product to market. We're trying to do something much faster than that if possible. Uh, we would like to think that hopefully we might be in a position where we can start uh, with a phase two as opposed to a phase one uh, we have technology that's already made it through phase two clinical trials, parent technology, and we've had the opportunity to add, um, tweak the technology, if you will. Uh, it was of the first to demonstrate enhanced survival uh, in this particular uh, brain tumor glioblastoma. And uh, we'd like to think our immunotherapy, along with our toll-like receptor adjuvants, will um, improve upon that. We've demonstrated that in our animal models, and uh, we look forward to seeing that kind of result in our human clinical trials as well. So having said that, uh, we would like to file our IND this year and then get presumed FDA approval uh, You know, shortly thereafter. Uh, we are currently looking at a, a trial design that would go as long as about three, three and a half years to get us midway through with phase two trials if possible. 
and then um, you know some years to come thereafter. So hopefully we could get it done in ten years as opposed to twelve years, or maybe even faster than that. Are there any estimates to the size of the overall market for glioblastoma? Yes, um, you know if we it's twenty twenty three now. If we were fortunate enough to bring our technology to market. Uh, let's say by 2030 or, or, or some years shortly thereafter, uh, it's guesstimated that the market size would be roughly uh, 3 billion. I'm sorry, 10 billion market size. And that's just for glioblastoma. If one starts to consider all the other tumors, it should be significantly greater. Once again, the company's Novaxis Global Incorporated, XSNX, the stock symbol. Gentlemen, uh, appreciate the update. Uh, it's a noble cause that you're pursuing. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very Thank much, you. Tom. It's a pleasure.